Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of Extina's Take. And it is Monday, so of course we got, oh, excuse me, trying to get comfortable, housewives stuff to talk about and some other stuff I gonna get off my mind as always, right? So let's just jump into it with the housewives. Um, as I said previously before, excuse me, trying to catch my breath. As I said previously before, I wasn't really sure how this virtual reunion was gonna be you know what i'm saying it was just so drastically different and we were so used to the other reunions where they're face to face and talking and all that but i have to say i don't mind it i really it's <laughs> it seems like it's so much more livelier and extra it's like who knew you know what i'm saying i'm like hell y'all might need to do this might, might need to do this from now on especially with uh well, Andy muting people, honey, that was just like, okay, Andy, you know, hell, he, he had the power that night. <laughs> he can't mute them during the regular reunions. He said he going to take full advantage. <laughs> but, uh, of course, you know, the shade was there. The reeds were there. The reeds were out of control, though. Like, y'all been practicing, honey. Y'all been sitting in front of the mirrors and ready for this reunion, practicing the reeds <laughs> and all the... Um, um, the stuff that you should whisper to each other that, you know, you have to read in, uh, subtitles or whatever, you know, no, you hear it now, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You hearing all kind of low down, dirty bitches, and I can't stand that bitch, and da da da, like, I'm like, okay, y'all, y'all really bringing it. I guess y'all was gonna, like, y'all, if y'all had to do it this way, y'all was gonna definitely keep interested and, and, and really bring it. Um, Kenya being Kenya, <sighs> we are not how I feel about Kenya. But what I really did find interesting, how Andy kind of gave it back to her, you know what I'm saying? Because I think over the years, Andy has let her, especially on the reunion, has let her get away with far too much. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what his thing is with Kenya, what soft spot she holds for him or whatever it is. But this year, he wasn't having it, honey. He, he you know, he's like, look, you got to be responsible for something. You know what I'm saying? But you did do this. But you did do that. You know what I'm saying? So that part I appreciated. Um... Nene and Candy, I was kind of surprised with that. That that kind of took me off guard because it was like, I mean, I know they ain't never really been friends, friends like that. They've always had like a little friction with them, a little tension, a little, you know, where, you know, they could kiki and be cool and kind of coexist, but, you know, they ain't never really been like tight like that, you know what I'm saying? But to hear the velocity or the intensity of their exchange, I was just like, where the hell is this coming from? Y'all was cool all season and you know then of course social media plays a role in it as it does with most things these days you know what i'm saying i think they beefing over something that nini said on social media about people having shows and why she can't get a show and why this person keep getting a show and for whatever reason candy thought she was talking about her which i never thought candy was talking about her i'm like but what shows do you have i mean i know you had the wedding special but, I mean, Nene had a wedding special, too. So, um, I can't come to mind of any other show that she had. Pri I, was there any other show that she Y'all, y'all. sometimes y'all got jogged as a memory because I watch so much of that stuff. I can't keep up with everything. And if she did have another show, obviously it didn't interest me enough to hold my attention because, you know, I'm not a huge candy fan like that but anyway back to that i just never thought that she was talking about candy like where you were you reaching baby you was reaching like i thought maybe she was talking about kim because kim don't had tardy for the party long after she had left the housewives you know what i'm saying but then i thought like well no because she ain't never had an issue with calling kim out at all she ain't got no issue with with wig and all the other stuff that she called her so i'm like so who could she be talking about and I was actually reading on Facebook because I was in this group or whatever and they were discussing it and they were talking about Lisa Vanderpump and I'm like, you know what? That makes perfect sense. Like, Lisa Vanderpump in the HBI, HBIC of Beverly Hills up until she decides to walk off in the middle of a season, which, I mean, people have mixed feelings about it. I actually do watch the Beverly Hills Housewives, y'all. I actually do. Um, I'm just not into it as much as the Atlanta, but I do actually follow the Beverly Hills Housewives um and I have to say with Beverly Hills Housewives there's a whole more level of petty and up it's just done in a more uppity refined way but the stuff they petty about is just or they argue about it's just it's just it'd be the stupidest stuff I'd be like this is what 
I guess that's what money do to you, honey. But anyway, the only one on the household I was like, I really like on Beverly Hills, and I've been meaning to mention her for a long time, is Erica Jane. Like, I love me some Erica Jane, honey. Like, she's really the only one I, I really watch like that. You know what I'm saying? Because she's, she's a broad's broad. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's just going to keep it real, and, you know, she ain't for the foolish shit. She just going to say what she say. And, but she doesn't do it in an ignorant way or a ratchet way. Like, she just is what she is, and she's a broad's broad, and I like that, and I like her humble beginning. She, she's, she's humble. She has all this, you know what I'm saying, married to this humongously successful lawyer who obviously can afford her a glam team every day at $30,000 a month, which came out her mouth. You know what I'm saying? Private, all the stuff that she got going on. And, and of course, and she's Erica Jane. I mean, she's a performer. She's a boss. You know what I'm saying? She had a couple of hits. And um, obviously in the, I don't know what genre, I guess the club world, she's a huge star in there. So, I mean, I ain't faulting a woman. I mean, obviously, you know, she's definitely a boss. You know what I'm saying? But she, for all that's going on with her, she seems to be more humble. But anyway, I'm not talking about them. Oh, they are on air, but anyway, I don't really talk about them like that. But I love me some Erica Jane. I just had to say that. But I was thinking, like, okay, so she walked off in the middle of a of a season. Like I said, people had their thing about LVP doing that. And I'm thinking, like, okay, yeah, it was stupid for the reason why. But at the same time, she had lost her brother. I think she lost some other... Like, she was just going through a tough time. So it was like, okay, I get it. She's probably had enough. Like, she ain't got time for these, these petty... Beverly Hill argument bullshit when she grieving and she running 800 restaurants and two clubs and you know what I'm saying but the fact is she 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 left one show but she was still allowed to have her other show and she's had that other show which is Vanderpump Rules which I have ass follow too but she's had Vanderpump Rules for I think four or five seasons now so she's had two shows on Bravo for years now walked off one and still able to have the other one so for me, that would be who would Nene would be talking about. Now, why Nene didn't call her out, I don't know. Maybe Lisa Vanderpump is the one person that intimidates Nene because, you know, <laughs> Lisa Vanderpump got, got that long money, honey, and she don't have that long money long before Beverly Hills Housewives. <laughs> so you may you might not want to go up against that one right there. You might, might just want to let her be and let her grieve and let her have her Vanderpump rules, okay? But anyway, I just... I just thought it was too much. Candy was just doing way too much. I don't know if that was just built up stuff she had towards Nene after eight seasons or however many seasons that she don't been on now and she just finally decided to let loose or what. But I just, I thought she was just doing too much and she was reaching. So anyway, that that's my take on that. Can't wait for reunion for part three. Her, whatever her name, Johanna, Yovana, whoever side, she ain't even a, she ain't even a friend of the show. I don't even know what the hell. Instigator shit starter. <laughs> it's what she is. I can't even call her a friend of the show. Who friend it? Well, I know she started off as Nene friend. I don't know who friend she is now. She's th thirsty. That's what she thirsty. <laughs> Just wants some air time. It's what she is. But uh, I guess she got Nene running scared because Nene, from what I understand, didn't come back for the third part. And Yovana was there. So, honey, I don't know. But looking forward to next week. So, um... I'm going to go ahead and get the, that's really all the TV. Oh, 90 Day Fiance. No, I love me that show. Love me. My daughter even loves that show. Like, we be all in. We be sitting there watching that show together. And we all know about Big Ed. He's an asshole. I just, I just I'm just so happy that him and Rose is over. Like, that That was just, just buffoonery at his best. It, it just, it's fun. I know I shouldn't go in on people when they look, because I know that I'm not the most beautiful thing in the world, but trust me, like I said, I ain't got no problems with how I look, and I try not to go in on I, I try. but my thing is, for a man to look like the way he look, you ain't got no issue with how somebody else look, especially a young, pretty girl that's younger than your daughter's age, and you worried about her shaving her legs, and like, you're just embarrassing the poor girl, like, you can say he ain't never been out the country before. You can tell, and if he has been out the country, he ain't never been nowhere in poverty before. Like he just has no under. The most hilarious part of the whole season though was when he had to take a bath with her dad. Like that was that was the highlight of my season for me, honey. It was absolutely hilarious. But anyway, I could care less about I, whatever. Um, the only two that really grabbed me because it's just the sheer stupidity of it all is the David guy in Lana although he met her he finally met her like I saw that last night like I was just like 
oh, the bitch is real. Like, and she actually looks like her picture. Like, what the hell? Like, what the hell was the hold up? Like, <laughs> I, I didn't get why all of a sudden after seven years and 18 failed meetings later, she decides to see him. Maybe because TLC pressured her. I, honey, I was just shocked. That was just a shocker of the night, honey. And then the other one, well, I don't even know her name. Is it Yvonne? I don't know her name, but it's the black lady, the older black lady with the cute little haircut that lost all that weight. And she's still chasing after this guy, but he don't catfish. And she just still ref Child, look. And I think I said this before. I think I have actually mentioned this before. Now it's coming back to me, but honey you are gorgeous you are in the prime of your life you lost all that weight i'm sure there are men that would be more than happy to have you on their arm and have you as a companion you seem like a sweet genuine a little bit ditzy and lost but you know you may not be the sharpest knife in the drawer but um you know some men like simple you know <laughs> you look like you you would treat a man right, you know what I'm saying? I don't get the whole 90 day fiance thing anyway. As much as I love the show, I don't understand. You y'all can't find people in your own cities that not or even in on your own state. Like you gotta go abroad. But whatever. That's just I didn't I mean I ain't gonna say I would know I'm married anyway, but I would never say I I just I that's a lot of commitment. I just don't have it in me. I just can't do it. But whatever. <laughs> if it ever floats your boat. But what I will say, you know, the MVP award goes to, of all the 90 Day Fiance, which is what I was getting to, has got to be Darcy. Because that poor woman going to be on episode, on season 18, still trying to find her some love. <laughs> and I want to like Darcy. I do. And it's a part of me that really feels for her. Because you can tell that all she really wants is love. But you are going about it in such the wrong way. Like, we understand you're emotional. And, and, but you just do too damn much. Like, learn how to tone that shit back. Give it to them in doses, honey. You don't let them see all the crazy at once. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're just, you don't let them see all the crazy at once. You give it to them in doses so they can handle it and be prepared for it. And then it becomes, you know, an, uh, it eventually becomes ingratiated into part of your makeup. You know, like, you're doing too much. Like, but yeah, she gonna be on season 18 and still trying to find love. And who was the MVP? Michael and what's her? Angela. Those are the MVPs too, honey, because they... On what season t season four now of this of their love story and they still ain't got married and they still ain't like what? How many more trips to Nigeria you gonna take just to stay on his ass? Like the hell! Like but you, you know I ain't mad though. Y'all y'all draw y'all getting them checks, honey. Y'all getting them TLC checks. Y'all drawing that out, honey. Y'all 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 get MVP for that. <laughs> if there was a Hall of Fame award, <laughs> y'all should be on it. So anyway, um. I don't know what's going to happen next week. Uh, I just want to see more of David and Lana. I just want to see how that's going to play out, really. Because I'm like, that was a plot twist that I didn't see it coming at all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Maybe some redemption. Yeah, she's still playing the shit out of him, though. Like, for real, though. But if he don't get a number after this and stop going through the damn app and the computer and then paying for it, no, honey, that woman's still playing you, okay? Get the phone number. Well, I will say get the address, but she gave you that. That wasn't even a real damn address. <laughs> anyway, so I want to talk about something serious. Get the fun and fluff stuff out the way. Um, <clears throat> and I think the other night I was talking about, I was going through my IG feed and going through this, uh, you know, this stuff that I was noticing on my IG feed. And the one thing that I failed to mention it, I meant to mention that had really got a reaction out of me and pretty much everybody is this whole thing with Boosie. Now, we know Boosie is Boosie. We know Boosie say ignorant shit. We already know that. We just, we, he's, you know, he's had this whole thing with Dwayne Wade's son and all that stuff. And I have my feelings about that, too. It's not so much I'm against it. Um, I'm all for living your life and living your truth. And, and you know, um that's between you and your god you know i don't i'm you know i'm not gonna lie, i'm not gonna say i all the way completely 100 percent agree with it and that's only because 
I just don't believe God makes mistakes. I believe, you know, God made your boy for a reason. God made your girl for a reason. I just don't think he makes mistakes. And yes, I know y'all can come to me with all the medical data you want to and all the tests that's been done and studies. And stuff. It, it's just, it is what it is, is what I believe. I'm not going to hate you for it. I'm not going to treat you any differently for it. I'm not going, I don't hate you as a human being for it. I, but and here's the thing in today's society that pisses me off. I can say that I don't agree with it. That does not make me homophobic, okay? That's just saying I don't agree with your lifestyle. Just like you might have somebody who's a college professor who don't agree with, with a trapper's lifestyle, with a trap lifestyle, or with the punk or punk rock lifestyle, or the jet set. Life. You know what I'm saying? They, these are lifestyles. And so I, I, just because I don't agree with it does not make me homophobic. I have no hate in my heart for them. I would never, you know, turn, you know... I'm respectful. We could, we could be, you know what I'm saying? Like, I would never, like, go out of my way to purposely hate somebody. It's just not in me. I'm not going to, unless you just did some fucked up shit to me. Yeah, I can hate you then. But, you know, or it's only one person I said I hate it. But, y'all got to go back a few videos for that. <laughs> not irritate my soul. I have one video for that, too. Well, I'm talking about actually hate, hate. Y'all can go back and look and see who that is. But... I just, I, but that does not make me homophobic. If people are so PC and politically correct these days, and you have to love everybody, and you have to love everything about everybody, you know what I'm saying? There's friends that I have, close friends that I have. I don't agree with everything they do. I don't agree with their lifestyle choices sometimes. Does that make me hate them as a person? No. Does that make me friendophobic? No. It does make me antisocial? No. It just makes, we're all different. So I wish y'all would stop that. Unless I'm just using the horrible f word in regards to that lifestyle or i'm openly uh, putting propaganda on against that lifestyle or so you know i believe in let people let li <clears throat> live and let live is what i believe you know what i'm saying we're all going to be judged someday i need to worry more about my spiritual health than i need to be worried about anybody else's period okay so i'm gonna leave it at that however i do believe at 12 years old when your mind is not fully developed yet and that and it's proven your 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 reasoning not there your long term is not there your mind is not fully developed yet i don't think that is appropriate to do it at that age now if at 25 and i would i wouldn't even say 18 or 20 because your mind still ain't developed yet you're still trying to figure your life out you're still trying to figure yourself out but i would say yeah at, in, in between 20 and 25 if you decide to make that lifestyle change and you want to live your life in that way then i'm all for it go for it you're an adult you lived a little bit your mind is more fully formed you have a fuller idea of what the world is and, and what you want to be in it i'm fine with that but just at 12 i just think it's a little too young and i'm not hating a man for supporting his child of course he's supposed to support his child and love his child regardless but to make that drastic of a i just i don't know i know it's a polarizing thing i'm probably gonna get some heat for it it's 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 what i feel now back to boosie okay what he said was just as worse or if not more horrendous as to what he admitted to in terms of he had older women give his 12 year old boys 11 year old boys 12 year old boys blow jobs so they can know the pleasure of a woman that is wrong on so many motherfucking levels so okay first of all let me just point out the obvious well i'm not gonna point out because obvious is the whole molestation part of it i'm gonna get i'm gonna get to that later the first obvious for me would be is and not to be too graphic, but I'm going to go ahead and say it because it is what it is. I am who I am. Boo Boosie, in case you didn't know, honey. Men suck dicks too. And from some women that I've heard, they've learned how to suck a dick from a, day, a gay man. They they taught them how. So you having your, 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 your little... Yo, son's little pee pee suck by what didn't mean shit. Still turn out gay. But I'm just saying, I'm just throwing that out there. Gay men suck dick too. Download men suck dick too. I've known women, not me personally, but I've known some women who said it was gay men who taught them how to do it. I'm just saying. So that reasoning right there was just stupid. Second of all, so what now you've created, apart from the molestation part of it, 
which is very serious. So because of that, because again, like I said, even as I said with with Dwayne Wade's son being 12 years old, his mind not fully formed yet. Your son's minds ain't fully formed yet. Their, their minds are not fully developed yet. Yeah, it feels good to them. Of course it does. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, look at how you making them look at women. So for the rest of your lives, someone for the rest of their lives or whoever life, I guess I'm trying to get to, some woman has going to have to deal with all the bullshit that came from that. Because from then on out, these little boys are going to look at women as only, or objectify women as only as sexual objects and sexual beings, and they're only there for their pleasure, and that's all they're good for. And they're going to super sexually objectify them. And they're not going to see a woman for what her worth is, which is so much more than her head game, uh, how good her pussy is, and all that other stuff. They're not going to see the intellectual, the soul, the spirit, the backbone, the strength, the intelligence of a woman. They're not going to see all that. And it's your fault. These are going to be the little boys that's going to be running around with 1,500 different women at all times, playing games with women and their feelings, having 18 different damn baby mamas. and uh, You know what I'm saying? Do you want to see the, 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 the problem society you just created? You're not creating healthy men. You create men that's going to have a whole lot of fucking issues with women and not healthy issues. And they're not going to look at women in a healthy and valuable way. So what you've done to your boys is far more damaging than anything Dwayne Wade has done with his. Because he's done his in love. He's doing it in love. You doing the shit out of pure motherfucking ignorance. But then again, look who we talking about. So, I, you know, I, it's, I, and, and people want to look at like, oh, well, they're just boys or some. Because a lot of people were actually outraged. So I'm not going to say some. But you do have those few stupid asses. Who are like, well, there's boys, it's different. The same way it's outraged from this whole R. Kelly stuff and how he was messing with any man, not just R. Kelly, but I'm just throwing him out there because there's a huge outrage about that. And trust me, I was part of it, honey. I was the one leading the pack with that outrage because honestly, I ain't fucked with R. Kelly since the first tapes came out way back when. I ain't fucked with that man since then. I've hated his guts since then. But everybody got all up in arms about that as they should have as they should have, okay? About because it was girls involved. But when it's little boys involved, all of a sudden, it's almost like it's a double standard. It's not taking it seriously. It's just as fucking damaging. Just as damaging. So as much outrage as we have for our Kelly, we need to have for Boosie too. Because it's your... I just can't. I just can't. Somebody can Somebody call... I don't know how old this boy is now. Or if this is something recent or, or anything. But, like, somebody need to go check into that household, honey. Because that shit... Any, mm, there's just no words. There's just no words. It's it's just pure. It's child abuse. That's just it's just child abuse. Period. I don't care if it's boy, girl, whatever. At twelve year old, your mind is not fully developed yet. You know what I'm saying? At twelve years old, I didn't even know what the hell sex was, and I know it's a different. Well, I may have had an idea, but very generalized. Not you know, I had even a desire for. I didn't even like. Well, okay, I had a crush on a boy, but nothing beyond holding hand. You know. It's just a whole different day and age now. But, I mean, I know that some men have been doing this for a long time. This ain't the first time I heard of a man saying they don't have his son. Or that, you know, I knew, not that I knew somebody. I've heard of people or heard of somebody in the neighborhood who took their kid to a prostitute. And had to, it's just, it's sick. It's sick. Let these men and women be who they gonna be. Let them find out and develop their sexual selves at their own pace, at their own rate, at the play, at the rate that they're supposed to. Of course, talk to them about it. You know what I'm saying? I'm a very open parent with my daughter. Well, to a certain degree, that's age appropriate. Let me make that very clear, age appropriate. But I always said when I became a mother that if my child ever asked me a question, I will answer it honestly. I will answer it that's appropriate for her in the way that she can understand that's appropriate for her age and it was appropriate what I feel is appropriate for her to know but I would never lie to her so yes of course coming down the line we're going to have <clears throat> conversations about sex we've already had one conversation about it not details I was just curious to know what she thought it was so we've already started that I've always told her since the time she was two since she understood what body parts was who, not to have anybody touch you and, and to value your body and your body is a temple. I've, I've instilled all that in her and will continue to instill that in her. That's what we need to instill in our children. Not this growing up too fast stuff. 
Like, come on, y'all. Like, I think my age is really starting to show. Because I don't get this new generation. And the thing is, Boosie ain't even fu- Boosie older than me. I can't even blame generation for that. It's just pure, unadulterated ignorance. And child abuse is what it is. He need his ass whooped for that. Because now whoever dealing with your damn sons is about to have hell to deal with because of the issues that you gave them because you made them think that women ain't nothing more than a sexual object to please them. Hmm. His service ass right as one of his sons came out gay. But actually, I'd be sorry. I'd be, I'd, I feel bad for the son, actually, because he'll, he'll be one of the ones you hear on the news that probably shoot his son for coming home with, with a man or find out that his man gay. So I don't want to wish that on him. But <sighs> anyway, I just had to get that off my chest. Y'all let me know what y'all think about that, because that shit, that blew my mind. I don't know why I never mentioned it earlier. I guess I had so much other stuff going on up here in this little crazy little mind of mine that, um... I didn't bring that up, but I thought about it as soon as, in fact, as soon as I got off and made the video the other night, it popped in my head. It's like, oh, why didn't I talk about that? But here I am talking about it. So yeah, drop a comment, y'all. Let me know. That's just sick and disgusting, y'all. Let me know what y'all think about that, because that's just crazy. I don't, it's just as damaging for boys as it is for girls. Like, it's just damaging, period, because they're children. Like, what the fuck? Anyway. Let's go on to some lighter stuff. Um, my random thought, my random thought. I actually have a couple. I'm going to throw them in there real quick. I love me some Cardi B. Love me, love me some Cardi B, honey. Y'all can't tell me nothing wrong about that woman. You just can't tell me nothing wrong about that woman. But there was one thing that got on my nerves. <laughs> and it was them damn nails. I was just like... They're so distracting. Like, I know she's a huge personality, and it takes a lot to distract you from Cardi B because Cardi B is Cardi B, honey. She is she's our whole personality, honey. But them nails managed to do it for me because it be I you know, I follow her, I watch her Instagrams, I watch her stuff, and I just and the whole time she's talking, I'm looking at the nails. Like, how the fuck do you do anything with them things? <laughs> So now, so lately, I've noticed uh, on her IG that she's actually cut them down. Thank God. Um, please keep on that that length. It's such a nice length. Like, just because they were so out of control. But thank you, thank you, Cardi. I so appreciate you cutting them damn things down. I really, really do. Because seeing her trying to hold stuff and cut stuff. I mean, she made it work. Don't get me wrong. But just... Like I said, she could be talking and literally the only thing I'm paying attention to is the damn nails. I wouldn't have heard nothing she said. I'm just looking at the nails. So. And my other random thought was, um, so we're going to go back to the pro wrestling thing for a minute because I had told that whole story. I'm not going to tell it again. But so y'all know, huge Undertaker fan. And um, and I'm, I'm only talking to my professional wrestling people. So if you guys don't want to hear nothing else, drop a comment below. Tell me what you think about this virtual union and this whole Candy Nene thing. Uh, let me know about what you think about the whole ignorance personified and stupidity of the whole fucking Boosie situation, which is just plain st stupid. Um, drop your comments about that. So if y'all don't want to hear about the rest of this stuff, go ahead and cut me off now. But like I said, don't forget to like, subscribe, and again, comment. So moving on to the wrestling, because I know half of y'all <laughs> don't like it or don't whatever. But for my wrestling fans out there. So recently, I'm on WWE Network. My plan was, and the only reason I got it, honestly, is because I heard there was an Undertaker uh, documentary coming out so I immediately signed up for it and I've gotten good use out of it it's brought back a lot of nostalgia I've watched a ton of matches old matches some matches I've some matches I've seen some I haven't but really that was literally the only reason why I signed up for it and whether WWE Network knows it or not as soon as the documentary is over I'm gonna <laughs> I'll subscribe because that's really all I wanted from it but anyway um please watch it if you haven't watched it it is compelling it is such behind the scenes like amazingly especially if you've been an undertaker fan like i have for the last 20 something years you guys have known how much he protects this character how mysterious the character is how private the character is you know 
you never saw him out in it just out of character you know what i'm saying so to finally like see him as a man and like he has like very vulnerable moments you see him with his wife you see it like just and it's all about i don't know if you're i'm not gonna get into it because i can be talking for hours about it but all i have to say is if you are a true undertaker fan like i am please get the wwe network it is worth the 9.99 the um documentary comes in first five parts the first two parts have already aired it comes on every sunday so you got three more par uh three more parts left before it's over but please 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 watch it it is absolutely fascinating fascinating and like i literally cannot wait till sunday to see the third part so anyway I'm done with that but if you're professional wrestling fan, if y'all seen it and y'all drop a comment because I, I thought it was actually compelling and absolutely fascinating I, I don't have enough wonderful things to say about it for me as a wrestling fan as an undertaker fan this is like the holy grail of <laughs> of whatever you want to it's like the holy grail like seriously as as an undertaker fan this is the holy grail this is what we've been waiting for which I'm happy that it happened at this time because it gave the character 30 years of mystique and build up and you know what I'm saying. And in a way, I, you know, I know that everybody's been speculating, speculating about his retirement for the last 10 or 15 years, you know what I'm saying. But for me, this feels like his last swan song, you know what I'm saying. Of course, the man probably still try to go another 5 or 10 years, but even he admitted, if you watch a documentary, that he knows he doesn't have that many matches left in him. But I think this particular era, if you want to call it that, really is just kind of his last swan song. Only because you've never had this much access to him. In terms of not just this documentary, which is like very comprehensive. It digs really deep in, you know, his personal life, his his mindset, his process, what he, you know, all of that. Um, you can see his camaraderie, with the relationships with the other wrestlers, like all of that. It's just wonderful. Um, but he's also done several interviews. A couple of them were on the WWE Network, which is the Skull Sessions with Stone Cold. I recommend y'all see that too if y'all haven't already seen. All it's been out for a while. I'm sure y'all seen it. Um, absolutely fascinating. I loved it. He had another one called The Bump, and he's doing all of this out of character. He's done it as Mark Calloway. As you know, he's not doing it as Undertaker. It's all him. Um, he had another one called The Bump that was on WWE Network, uh, where he was talking about the documentary. That was good. Um, he did one for Nine Line Apparel, uh, which that's not on WWE Network. You can actually YouTube that one. That one, it was I. Right. It, it, I didn't like it as much as I did the other ones. But anyway, but just to see him do this much press and this many interviews and open up in this way where he's never allowed this much access to himself before. It just feels like for me he's in that place where he's just ready to be him and and let go, I guess. I guess that's his way of kind of letting go of it a little bit because anybody knows that him as a character as how how protective he is of this character like i think he even said that even in his personal life if he was seen out in the streets he would dress all in black to preserve the character so that's how committed he was to it so to see him open up in this way just kind of for me seems like okay this is his winding down this is his last one and i'm here for all of it i'm here for all of it this is like i said the holy grail for me i'm just in heaven right now as far as being an undertaker fan so anyway if y'all seen any of what i just mentioned in terms of those interviews drop a comment let me know what y'all thought about it i thought they were excellent nine line wasn't my favorite one but it was still it's nice to see him out of character it was actually one of the first ones i saw <coughs> or any other topic that you want to talk about like i said hit that subscribe button hit that like button let me know if you like what you're seeing okay so i can have a little motivation i mean i'm gonna do it anyway but you know give me a little bit more motivation or something Throw me a line out there, y'all. Throw me a comment. Don't be scared. All right, let's talk.